listening to Will County's News Talk Sports 1340 WJOL. It's a Tuesday morning. It's time to bring you Money Talks, brought to you by our friends at Newmar Credit Union. Summer is here. Are you dreaming about your next adventure? If you're ready to hit the road with a new motorcycle, Newmark can help you get to your fantastic future faster with great rates and exceptional service. If you're currently still paying on a motorcycle, Newmark refinances too. Want to apply or learn more? Visit Newmark online at newmarkcu.org. That's N-U-M-A-R-K-C-U.org. Newmark Credit Union, where you are family. This guy feels like family. I've been talking to Harry for several years. I'm even a customer of Harry's. The vice president of mortgage lending for Newmark Credit Union is Harry Stewart from Newmark. And he joins us this morning on the Turk Furniture Studio Line. Good morning, Mr. Stewart. Hey, Scott. How you doing? I'm fine and dandy. Thank you very much for joining us. We do want to remind you that coming up at the end of the show, Harry's going to be giving away a $25 Visa gift card, compliments of Newmark Credit Union. Uh, We're going to discuss several things here during the program. Listen closely because I'm going to ask you to repeat something that Harry told us and you could win that $25 Visa gift card. Harry, what's new in your world, man? Anything good or bad or indifferent? Uh, nothing really. I guess, uh, well, I'm going to be a grandpa, so that's whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to be a grandpa? Yeah, I can't, I can't, I don't feel like a grandpa. <laughs> you don't look like a grandpa. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, what, what happened? Well, I know what happened, but I mean, uh, when, when did you find out? Uh, probably about a month ago. Oh, uh, yeah, well, so. congratulations, big boy. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. When is, uh, what is it, your daughter? Yes, when my is daughter she, when is and she do? Uh, her fiance. Okay. Uh, she she actually is going to school and she's working at a nursing home and a preschool. So she's uh, wow. she's got a pretty good work ethic about her. Man, so that's awesome. Uh, well, she got that from a, her folks, that's for sure. Yeah, she'll be a great mom, too. All right, so, so. but but let's, I, if, if you don't mind. And if it's none of my business, just say, <laughs> so you're going to be a grandpa, and then your youngest is? Uh, five. Yeah. So he's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Well, Harry, you have fun with that, buddy, okay? It, well, hopefully it'll keep me young I before told, I know it, you I, know? <laughs> I told Harry when we were doing some work together a, a few months ago, I said, uh, hey, mine are out of the house. I'm an empty nester, and I'm loving it. And Harry, <laughs> Harry just looked at me across and said, my youngest is five. <laughs> oh, man. Right, you're a good man. If anybody can handle it, you can, Harry. I'm going to try. All right, brother. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, let's welcome Harry Stewart, the Vice President of Mortgage Lending for Newmark Credit Union. Oh, man, I don't know where we start because the home buying scene is still wild. We have a couple of very good real estate agents, Eddie Rudiger and um, – and, uh, and Brent Wilk on WJL Radio, they do shows every week, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. So I'm pretty in tune with what's happening in the real estate market. <laughs> so I might yep. be able to answer this question, but Harry, I'll let you do it. It's sheer and utter madness still. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, it, it, you know, it is a good market for first-time homebuyers, but they got to be ready to pull the trigger. And a lot of people uh, still think, hey, there's there's deals to be had and there's negotiation. Uh, I'll send I'll send you over a funny video that I had, but uh, really it's a seller's market, which is the exact opposite of like 10 years ago when we're talking. We're talking about 17 months of inventory on the market, so you could get good deals everywhere. Now with the, with it being a seller's market, the sellers don't have to negotiate because they've got five, six, or more offers already uh, when the property comes on the market. So um, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty crazy right now. And, like, I don't even think our state's as bad as some of the other states in Florida. Uh, houses sell, sell within, like, 24 hours. Texas, some homes are selling for... Um, 10, 20% of asking price. It's a, uh, it's a different kind of market than yeah. it was 10 years ago. Well, just a, a personal story. My mom and dad, they're going to be moving into an assisted living facility and we put their house on the market last Sunday night at seven o'clock. It was sold by the next morning at 11 o'clock and, yeah. and, and for well over the asking price. Yes, it is. 
it's crazy, right? It is. It absolutely is. Hey, real quick, but before we, we jump in and give some tips for first-time home buyers, let's talk a little bit about this appraisal situation because, you know, some people are like, okay, so my house is worth my house is worth 280, but I'm going to take the top offer of $335,000 because that's the biggest offer even though there are some other people that I liked better that maybe I knew, but hey, if it's going to be an extra $50,000, I'm going to go for it. Harry, can you kind of explain how the appraisal situation goes and why, if you get offered three thirty, you may not be able to get three thirty instead of two eighty? I'm actually glad that you asked that question because it is a problem. Because the market, uh, the way appraisers work, they're going to look at comparables that have sold within the last twelve months that are going to be most like uh, your uh, the subject property that's selling. So if if they're just taking um, offers that are way high, the market probably hasn't caught up yet to those values. So the appraised value could come in short, and it has come in short on a lot of lot of different appraisals that we're doing. And if the seller isn't willing to come down, the buyers actually have to come up with that difference if they still want the house. Of course, they could back out of the contract and say, hey, the home's not appraising for when I'm purchasing it. Or, but uh, um, a lot of times they'll maybe try to meet halfway, but uh, the sellers... You know, if they if they're stubborn and they don't want to move, and they they've had other offers or other cash offers, um, the buyer would have to come up with that difference if they still want the home. Oh, absolutely. So that that contract that was signed, if the appraisal comes back at okay, so let's say two eighty, appraisal comes back at two ninety five, they were offered three thirty. So that contract is then null and void if the buyers aren't satisfied with what the appraisal came back with? Well, the buyers the buyers can make uh, uh, or say, hey, we uh, our property is not appraising out it, because it would affect the terms of the loan. Okay. Um, our, our numbers as far as loan to value uh, for lending, it's always going to be based on the appraised value or purchase price, whichever is lower. Got it. And if the appraised value comes in uh, much lower, like thirty five thousand, a lot of borrowers might not qualify, and they could they could use that uh, as a reason to get out of that that particular contract. Usually, the attorneys talk it out, and there's some sort of middle ground. But right now, I've seen I've seen some sellers that don't want to move from that purchase price, mm-hmm. and uh, buyers having to come up with that difference. Interesting, very very interesting. Okay, so uh, these are the following are tips when. Buying a home, especially for the first time. And let's get into this because this is a rough time to be a first time home buyer because Harry, back in the day, uh, you could just, you know, walk in and uh, say, hi, we're interested in your house. And uh, yeah, we have to sell ours first. Uh, Let's give people tips on on right now in this market, what people need to do to purchase a home for the first time. I I think, well, it's the same in any market. The first step is to get pre-approved and, uh, I guess uh, the main thing is the mindset. Be ready. Be ready to move. Like if you're going to look at a property that just came on the market, uh, uh, either same day or maybe yesterday, you you don't have time to say, "Well, I'll wait till the weekend," you know. And then my parents might want to come back for a second second view. You know what I mean? Like you got you got to really jump at opportunity. Bring everybody with that that you're going to want to bring with to walk through the house the uh, first time. You might even be waiting in the driveway for mm. other other people to walk through the home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it it's uh, it's it's that that crazy. So you got to be ready to make the decision uh, right on the spot. Which I I, I never think of like uh, um, buying or or buying uh, an, uh, a car or a truck as being like an impulsive decision. But like in this case, for first-time home buyers, it would be an impulsive decision. Like, hey, this hits most of our most of our points of what we want. You know, we gotta we gotta move on it. Yeah, no doubt about it. Harry Stewart joining us. He's the vice president of mortgage lending at Newmar Credit Union. All right, let's talk about credit score because that's really really important. What do buyers need to know about their credit score, and what happens if it has a few blemishes? Yeah, credit scores are, are are very important. It's uh, um, 
credit, credit, collateral, and capacity. Those are the three C's. Credit being very important. That's probably the first thing we know about buyers. So the higher the credit score you have, you're just going to have additional flexibilities with uh, down payment, uh, program, REIT. Uh, if you start getting into lower credit scores, um, you might not have the same flexibility with the down payment, might not have the same flexibility with, uh, with the interest rate, uh, might, even, um, might not even have the same flexibility for the program. So I always try to get somebody into a conventional loan first uh, without having to go the government uh, route, but uh, we always fall back on uh, uh, FHA if we can't make something work conventional, right. which is... is isn't a bad thing altogether. Um, it uh, uh, actually the government rates are pretty low right now. It's the mortgage insurance that that kind of um, moves us away from that. The mortgage insurance is typically a little bit more expensive. Harry, about how much does someone need to make? And I'm sure that answer will be different based on what type of home they're looking for. Correct. Uh, yeah, and I, I would say it's a uh, it, we when we calculate something, it's more based on debt ratios, like monthly monthly income versus monthly expenses. I would say to feel comfortable if you're a first time home buyer, you probably want to stay around maybe forty percent, forty percent debt ratio versus your uh, um, your gross forty percent of your gross uh, um, monthly income versus your uh, gross monthly expenses, but it's not to say that we can't go higher. Um, we've done we've done stuff at 50% or even higher than 50% on some situations, but I'd say to feel comfortable as a first-time home buyer, keep it around 40, and uh, it, it won't be yeah. as, as stressful. Yeah, you don't want to have to spend every single dime that you have on your home. That's no fun. No way to live. Yeah, you get house poor, and a lot of people don't uh, realize that – it's almost like a second job when you buy a buy a home. You know, there's a lot of upkeep and yep. a lot of things that you're not anticipating if you're coming straight from either uh, living with family to uh, renting your own own apartment. You know, there's a lot more uh, involved in home ownership yep. as far as the maintenance, the upkeep, and obviously you want to keep your house pretty. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, keep the value of it up, no doubt. Harry, what yeah. about down payments? Uh, is that something we need? If so, how much? Uh, down payments. Uh, there's there's a lot of different programs. Uh, um, there's first time conventional programs that only require three percent down. Uh, FHA is three and a half percent down. If you're a veteran, um, there's a um, the VA loan is is a great loan and the rates are perfect. There's no mortgage insurance. You can get into a house with with uh, no money down, 100% financing. So that's a great program if you qualify. Okay. Harry, what about closing costs? What or how does that impact your mortgage? Well, it, if, it's, if, it's a, if it's a purchase, you can't really, on a refinance, you could roll in some of the closing costs because you've, you've got equity built up. In a purchase, your equity is basically your down payment. So you're coming up with the closing costs out of your pocket anyway. So uh, closing costs are typical on a purchase, maybe 2500 to, to 4500 in the Chicago area. And, uh, of course, if you're uh, escrowing your taxes and insurance, that also uh, gets tacked on there. Uh, to set up your initial escrow deposit. You've got uh, earnest money that you have to come up with. Uh, your homeowner's insurance has to, the, the, the year with a premium has to be paid for uh, at closing or up front. Uh, so those are expenses that you'd have to come up with uh, um, at closing or prior to closing. Uh, there is uh, Illinois, like where our taxes are in arrears. So this this year is actually the 2020 real estate tax year. So you'll get a credit for the time you did not occupy the property. Uh, usually equates to anywhere from uh, 10 to 14 months of uh, real estate tax credit that'll help offset some of some of those closing costs, but uh, it won't it won't uh, offset all of them. Okay, 15 or 30 year mortgage. What do you suggest? Uh, if you're a first time home buyer, um, I would say go with a 30 year mortgage. Okay. Uh, if, uh, if refinancing and, and trying to, uh, um, 
build up equity faster and pay it off faster. Uh, I do like the 15 year mortgages. I, I have a 50 more year mortgage myself, but when uh, getting in, jumping both feet in as a first time home buyer, I, w- I would say there's nothing wrong with a 30 year mortgage. And then when you get your uh, uh, feet under you, um, maybe refinancing into a 15, a 15 year fixed, if it makes sense. All right. I think that would be great. Earnest money. Is that something that is involved in every transaction? I would say 99% of the transactions I see earnest money, unless it's like some sort of uh, family or friend that's selling the home to another. Maybe they won't accept the earnest money, but earnest money is just basically um, a good faith deposit on the contract. It kind of locks your contract in to where they they remove it uh, remove it from the market and or show it as uh, contract pending once they receive the earnest money. And I would say the most common. Uh, uh, used to be a thousand dollars. Now I'm seeing a little bit higher amounts recently because of the seller's market. So they want to make their offer look uh, a little bit more attractive to the sellers. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. I I just saw one on a, a two hundred thousand dollar house that was a ten thousand dollar earnest money check. So which is a little bit a little bit out of the ordinary, but I think it's uh, it's heading that way with the market. What about escrows? Explain that to people. They hear it and they're like, "Escrow? What does that mean?" So escrow in uh, in Illinois, like we we throw around the term, and it, it basically means that we're including taxes, and insurance, and your mortgage insurance, and in with your uh, monthly mortgage payment. So we keep uh, we keep uh, um, like a separate fund that you pay your uh, annual in homeowners insurance bill from, and. Uh, uh, your ta- real estate tax installments, so that you never really have to worry about it. Okay. Uh, Harry, just a couple of more minutes. I think this is a real important question. Picking the best real estate agent for you. There are so many people that have their licenses right now, and this is a serious business, very serious business, especially in this climate. Yeah, it, the only thing I could think of, you know, as far as picking the, the best uh, best agent available um, usually you could see if somebody's successful, you know, due to their uh, social media posts, you know, they're always active, they're always promoting, they're always working. I, I would definitely in this market pick a professional, uh, not like the part-time realtors that, you know, also work at Amazon or something and they're, they're and I'm not knocking Amazon, I'm just oh, saying pick a, pick a full-time, full-time uh full-time realtor um if especially in this market you you don't or if some if a realtor is telling you well i can't i can't go with you until saturday you know in the market in the the home just hit the market uh you want somebody that's gonna be available for you um if if not you might lose out some opportunities okay uh and a person looking for their first or next home purchase how do they get started should they call you uh, well the away? first uh, yeah yeah, exactly. The first the first step is to get pre-approved, uh, just so you know exactly what you could afford, and get get your pre-approval out, pre-approval letter and get ready to to go home shopping. Um, the best way to contact me is either uh, my direct line, which is the eight one five seven four four six seven six seven, or you could always email me at hstewart at newmarkcu dot org. Uh, and if uh, if you're good with computers, you could always go online to our website and apply online. Uh, we've got uh, we've got quite a few loan officers now. We've got seven uh, seven MLOs. Uh, my name's also up there, so you could also you could you could always apply online. And as soon as we get that, we'll bring it in and work up your pre-approval options. All right, and the website is numarkcu dot org. Newmark Credit Union. Harry, we're going to spring you. We got to give away a twenty five dollar Visa gift card. Compliments of your credit union. So thanks for joining us, brother. And uh, again, congratulations, my friend. All right. Thanks, Pat. Have right. a great day. All right. Take care. Truly one of the good guys right. in the business or in any business. That's Harry Stewart, Vice President of Lending for Newmark Credit Union. So Harry, at the beginning of the show, told us he was going to be a grandpa. And then I asked him, okay, so you're going to be a grandpa, but you have a young one at home. How young is that young one at home? Harry told us that young one's age. What is it? 815-254-7300. Again, that's 815-254-7300. First correct caller gets a $25 Visa gift card courtesy of our friends at Newmark Credit Union. Hi, good morning. You're on WJOL. Who's this? 
Mary. Hi, Hi, Scott. Hi, Mary. What's the right answer? Five. Five. He's going to be a grandpa, and he's got a five-year-old at home. I love it. Only Harry. No, 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 no. Only Harry could handle that. <laughs> no Mary, way. All right. Hey, well, congratulations. Hang on. i got to get some information from you. Uh, you just got yourself a $25 Visa gift card. Compliments of Newmark Credit Union. Well done, Mary. Thanks. Thanks, guys.